Welcome to Intersections, a series of art talks that aims to uplift and connect local creatives hosted at the Eastside Art House in Riverside, California. This month, we're talking with artist Julie Rose. You can see her current work at julieroseart.com or follow her on Instagram at julieroseartist. We're going to highlight Julie, who's the artist here. Hey. <laughs> and she recently has had a solo show here at the art house. And then... um. There's a little artist statement right there on that black wall. Thank you everyone so much for being here. It's like truly a great honor to, to speak with you all. And I'm sure this is something that's going to come up a lot in the talk about like building that community. And so like I want you all to thank yourselves for being here because you're building your own artist community here in Riverside. And that's like so powerful. It really is. So just the fact that you're here and you're meeting these other creatives, like it just means that Riverside is so much on the come up for art stuff and you're building your community like these are the people that you're going to see doing art in this community they're going to inspire you so thank you guys for being here thank yourselves for being here because it's great <laughs> anyway um so i'm julie rose uh, i grew up in wisconsin but i am now i've been in riverside since 2015 in california since 2009 so i've lived a lot of different places out here in southern california la orange county lots of different cities in there and Riverside is home. Like, I love it here so much. I want to live here forever. I live right downtown, like a five minute drive away from here. So I just, I love it here for sure. So you said you're from Wisconsin. Yes. Sorry, Wisconsin. I'm Wisconsin. Sorry. But, uh, Wisconsin, don't um, you know? Where, where in Wisconsin are you from? I'm from like basically the middle of nowhere. <laughs> so I always do the little the little map. Um, Isn't that Michigan? You know? Well, Michigan is, oh, yeah, that's like the Michigan. high five. Oh, like, Wisconsin yeah. is, also has Door County is like this one, right? Gotcha. So the capital is in the middle. That's Madison. That's like five hours from where I lived. And we're actually like right over here. We're like two hours from Minneapolis, St. Paul, which is Minnesota. That was a little closer. So it was like a very small town. We're talking like, like, 1,200 people population. All of the school was K through 12 all in one building. So I was with the same like 30 kids from the time I was in kindergarten to the time I graduated. It was like a very surreal experience comparing it to like my friends that I talked to out here who had like 3,000 people in their class, you know? We had one art teacher for the entire school, you know, like that, that did K through 12, <laughs> you know, one art teacher. How do you um, like get into like, say like a, what were your creative, like, um, you know, I mean, I'll, most children at the moment, they just mess around with, like, art stuff. Was there anything that you remember specifically as a child, like, I'm going to draw a cheese. I don't know. <laughs> 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 Safe bet. Safe bet. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, I think, when, like, I, you, you said that you were going to ask about, like, early memories. And so I, last night when I was, like, awake in bed because I was excited about this and I was thinking about what I was going to say, it brought up all of these memories that I hadn't thought about in so long. And I think the earliest one I can remember was it being a rivalry thing. So I had I had a friend who, like, I specifically remember the drawing, too. It was, like, around Easter time, and it was an Easter egg in the grass. And it had that kind of 3D thing because some of the blades of grass were in front of it. And I was, like what I want to do that and so I basically like copied hers and oh. I was like look at how great I am <laughs> so it started off as like a rivalry like I just wanted to be better than my what friend are you doing now? at drawing <laughs> what is your friend doing still <laughs> I, don't uh, I don't know I, I'm still not sure next. where Danielle is but thank you Danielle it was it was all because of you you know <laughs> oh, but so that that was a very early memory I also remember um a lot of kids have these it's like the tracing thing so it's it's like a little plastic thing that has the shape of like a horse and you like you just go around the outline and I remember doing those as a kid and thinking it was so cool that I was making this and then my dad was like you know you could just draw that like, you don't have to trace it like just draw something try to draw something on your on your own and I was like oh I can do that and and like ever since then it, it is like I think you lose sight of it when you get older, but it is a superpower to be able to create things because you're creating like an entire world. You're creating an entire creature. Like, it's like, it's amazing that you can do that. <laughs> like if you can see something in your brain and get it on a paper and put it into somebody else's brain, that's an amazing superpower. Like don't ever lose sight of the magic of that, I think. Like, um, so were there like classes that you took or were like, does, did your high school or elementary school like did they uh, provide any of those tools for you to learn like creatively or luckily or you on your own you kind of like happen to like stoke your own fire I don't know 
Um, a little bit of both. So luckily we did have, I do talk to a lot of kids in my work. I do face painting on the weekends. I've done that for a long time. And I always ask kids, I'm like, do you have an art class? And a lot of times the answer is no, which is very sad. But at least when I was younger, we cycled through. So at least once or twice a week, we did have an art class, like with the teacher that was, you know, teaching us really good stuff about you know, color and like warmer, cool colors and all that basic stuff. And I, I do realize that I was very lucky to have like mm. at least some instruction all through school, even if it was only once or twice a week, that's, you know, better than what a lot of kids get. So, but then it was also a little bit on my own as well, because you're only like, once I started showing some like interest and talent and skill in the arts, like I was branded the art kid. So like, because of the school was so small. So I got a lot of opportunities that way that was kind of, was kind of like limited by like how little instruction that there was and how stretched thin that instructor was. So I did have to do a lot of like research on my own, but I would have done that anyway. Cause that's, you know, that's just learning and finding your style and things yeah. that you like. So like, were you like, um, already aware? I mean, like, I guess like, Internet and stuff makes everything easier for, like, I mean, like, growing up, we had to, like, I, it was whatever I knew, like, Tom and Jerry or... Yeah. No one knows what Tom and Jerry is anymore, but... Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, like, Tom and Jerry or, like, Looney Tunes and stuff. Lo yeah. So you're always trying to, like, draw, like, a Bugs Bunny or whatever. Mm -hmm. But, like, were there, for you, was, like, were, uh, were you already into, like, say, anime or anything like that? Because it made, it, it's all across the board now is anime is just, like... Yes, big, yeah. I, and I think that was one of my initial like big ins. Like I've always loved cartoons. I still love cartoons. I, I don't think I've watched a live action anything in a very long time. I'm like, ew, real people, no. But <laughs> but, <laughs> but uh, anyway, I remember Pokemon was my big mm. one. I loved Pokemon so much. I loved the style of it. I loved like the idea of friendship and these little monsters. And and so that story has always been a big part of my like artistic experience like I want to draw something that tells a story but because I'm inspired by like the things that I'm seeing that are telling stories so mm. I'm, I usually try and put something like that into no, my I can work see that to now. this day like, oh, yeah, yeah. Well, that's cool like so from there like how did you did you decide like you know I'm going to take the art the, the artistic career more professionally or did you just like um you know like, it's like some folks like myself when you go to I'm just going to take my like GEs at or like in school and see what happens and then drop out for a while. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I've never had a real plan, I guess. Like, I think that's because I'm the youngest of five. So, and by like a lot, I'm the baby. I'm the only girl. So I've always had it like very easy. Like any, you know, like. I was, was your family artistic? No, no. Oh. All my brothers work in like IT, very like logic based. What like about your dad? Because he told you you can draw it instead of <laughs> tracing. He actually. And that's the interesting thing. And that's another thing I talked about when I was on the other podcast. I don't know if anybody caught that one. But um, they were asking about, like, oh, what, what things can parents do to, like, instill arts in their kids? And that is another memory that I have that's very strong is, like, my dad is not an artist. But he sat down and he would draw with me. Like, when there was, like, I remember him drawing. There was some flowers from, like, an anniversary or something. And we just sat down and drew that together. And even though, like... You know, people bring their baggage. They're like, if I'm not a great artist, like, I don't want to, I don't want to, you know, I don't want to do it. I don't want to, but that's like putting a barrier yeah, between yeah. you. And so your kid is seeing that and thinking like, oh, you know, that's not for adults or something, or that's not for me. Like some I'm elitist not an artist. like stuff. <laughs> so, I, so from there, how did you get to um, like more professional or like more, uh, what's the word, um, classically trained like, did you come over, like, were you already, did you already have some class, like, um, classes, like, under your belt in the Midwest, then moving to um, California, or were you, did you, like, learn the bulk of, like, um, your technique, I guess, over here? Um, that's a good question. I did learn some basic stuff, um, you know, like, I remember learning how to do the grids, uh, so that you can, you know, from a copy from a photo reference and things like that. And I learned a little bit about value and a little bit about color. But I'd say, like, the bulk of my education was in higher education here in community college, which is one of the greatest things. I'm so grateful for community colleges. Like, there's no pressure. The cost is, like, very low. I mean, it's higher than it's ever been, but it's still relatively low for higher education for the quality of teachers and classes that you get. It's unbeatable. And there's people from all walks of life in those in those classes there's you know lots of students who are coming at it with a different perspective there's returning people who are like older who have that perspective and 
professionals. So I'm here at RCC? RCC, and I also took a few classes at OCC, but the bulk of it is at RCC right here down the street. Nice. Shout out. Love RCC. That's <laughs> RCC plug. Yes. <laughs> so from there, did you, were you, while you were in school, were you, did you, um, how did you get into face painting? Oh, face painting is so great. I love it. I love that. <laughs> I'm so, I will talk about this all the time. It's so, I was very lucky. So when I first moved here from Wisconsin, I had like road tripped it out with my friend who then went back. Um, and so I was here alone and I didn't even have a place to stay when we first came out here. Like I figured it out on the road. Um, and it was, it was really challenging. I was looking for a job anywhere. I was like, I will, I will take like fast food. I'll do, I'll do anything. And I was looking for all these places and I was on Craigslist. Um, and I found this lady who she had a face paint business in Orange County and she had just gotten kind of like big enough. She wanted to hire on somebody else to take over some extra gigs that she was getting. And so we met at like a coffee shop and like right there on the spot, she had me paint her face, which was like, oh, the most horrible interview. <laughs> I was like, oh my God, I've never done this. And I did like a, I did like a black cat, which I wouldn't do that today. Like that's a very challenging one. And I had no idea. So it was just a mess, but she thought it was good enough. So, was, next she, thing I knew. was she asking you yeah, questions? Yeah, yeah, like she was seeing if it would be a good wait, 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 fit. Was she asking you questions while you're painting like, your face? Uh, <laughs> so how do Shaking you? hands, like, this is fine. <laughs> this is, like, going to be my boss. It's fine, you know. Like, but how, it's, long, how long was the process of that? Oh my gosh, in, in the, yeah, in the coffee bean and tea leaf. Oh I don't gosh. even know. It was Were you like, inside it's or all outside? Over. Inside, no. yeah. <laughs> Making a mess, like, I'm sure. It was wild. It was wild. But that was the beginning of a beautiful thing because awesome. like from that then on, so I'm, I'm an independent contractor. So basically she would like send me out to different events and I like learned on the job. I had no hand holding. I was like on my own at a gig the next week and I learned so much in that time and we did grow together. We started doing balloon twisting, which really grew the business because now you're doing instead of one hour, you're booking two hours or you just doubled your income and we're like learning there's there's you know videos and stuff and we're taking classes and all of those techniques and skills are in the work you see today that I've been building from that time because I practice my I call it um, brush mileage is what I call it so that's that's what I'm super grateful to face painting for is because I'm out there like every weekend mm. for a few hours at a time at least practicing my brushes I'm learning what my brushes can do I'm like figuring out like the different strokes that they can make. The angle brush was like a really good one to learn. You can see that on um, like, so this is all one flat brush that I'll put multiple colors on and then you can like pull it around and the flat brush, it's kind of like a calligraphy pen if you've ever played with those where like you can make thick lines or thin lines based on the angle that you take it. So that and then those flowers are actually the same kind of flowers that I do um, in my face painting, the roses and the other ones, like it's, it's the technique I learned in face painting, and you can apply that to the different arts in your life. You know, every time that you learn a new skill, it surprises you because you can apply it in all kinds of different ways. We've done it on mural walls. Um, we've done like those that multi-brush technique, and it just it looks amazing. So were you in school while you were doing face painting, or did you yeah. after? Mm -hmm. So were the was, things from face painting that you like kind of like, oh, I know how to do this, and like in, into your own class, like oh, I already know how to do this because of face painting. Sometimes it was it was it worked both oh, ways. It's a it's like a mutual exchange. So sometimes I would learn something in my class about you know breaking things down into simpler shapes. Mm. So if, I, if someone asked me for like a cartoon character or something, I'm looking at it you from my class cat. like oh <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm looking at it as like breaking it down and like doing the layering. But then also like sometimes in my class it'd be like oh I can do like a cool multicolor brush to add to this piece. You know so they were they were informing each other mm. like all of your creative skills do when you when you learn something you yeah. apply. So you finished the uh, RCC, and then finished. I'm, I'm never no one, finished. No one's, finished. <laughs> no one's ever finished. No one's ever finished. <laughs> and what's after that? Like uh, now, didn't you like decided to go? Well, you know what? I'm gonna take this a little more seriously. Like this artist life career. Yeah, I think it was. I met I met Catherine Munez. She she does some great art. I met her, and I saw you know on Instagram like she was a local artist, and she was killing it. And I was like, okay, <laughs> you know, this is this is really something I do want to pursue. I, I've done the face paint and I love that and, I'm, and I want to keep that and that's weekends. And 
uh, I, and then I saw these other people and I was like, I want to start doing the, um, the like vending or I want to do more fine art stuff. I, I met with um, Teresa too. Um, she's another local amazing artist. She does face paint and all kinds of other stuff. And we got to talking and I wanted to start doing more like fine art. I, this is another thing I can do during the week mm. that I want to express myself with. That's more refined. I can take more time on these paintings. And so I just kind of went from there and it all... It all came together yeah. and I want to create more, but I also don't want to turn my back on this right. because I put a lot of effort and time and I do miss being just in front of a canvas and like staring my figure in the eye and, you know, using the oil paints and the smell of it all. Like I miss that too. Uh, so I want to keep doing these as well. I just, I'm just not sure yeah. what. So she has a really cool like piece on the uh, group wall there. And like, so I was working in mine and then Julie comes in. I took a spray paint. <laughs> <laughs> Left for the day. <laughs> but, uh, I did that several times actually, but kind of like, oh my gosh, like and there's gold leaf on it too and <laughs> anyway. But uh, no, she's I can't resist sparkly so stuff like, in case like, you didn't notice. I love sparkles. But there was a, <laughs> we were talking uh, there's a question that you had that was about the ugly something. Oh yes, I wanted That's to really ask. Cool. So if, when you're working, mm -hmm. How do you work through the ugly <laughs> art stage oh, of art? Yeah. Like if you're a painter or an artist, yes. you're familiar with you, that. I hear around the room that yeah. people know exactly what she's talking about. Every piece of art, every single one, every beautiful piece that you've ever fallen in love with has had a hideous phase. But I'm sure the artist was about ready to flip the table <laughs> because it's like, it looks so bad. Um, yes, you have to just power through it. That's, that's the only thing that I've learned is like, like, respect your own process, like understand it is a process. You have to, you, it has to go through an ugly phase. And that's the thing that like, you know, like you always say like social media will trick you because it does, you only ever see like the good stuff. You only ever see the finished product. You only ever see people's perfect lives, but <laughs> it's not like that. And, and your art is exactly the same. It's not gonna just be done on the page. You know, it has to go through that ugly phase. Mm -hmm. So power through it. Don't give up. Don't give up on your on your piece. Like it, you're making it for a reason. Like there's some reason that you started this thing, and it's a, that's a good enough reason for you to see it through. You know, just keep going. Keep keep powering through. Um, and then it, at the very end, once you like push through, if you still don't like it, then you can try something new. But at least you like you did your best. Yeah. So you mentioned you were selling thousand dollar paintings at. At the <laughs> trying, <laughs> I was not selling them. <laughs> how, do you, how do you price your work? Like, how do you know? Do you look at like what other people are selling work for? Do you look at the market? Like, how do you know how to price your work? Because I yeah, that. it's that's the hardest thing. That is a hundred percent, and I still have trouble with it. Um, I've looked it up a lot of different times. I did compare like in the area to, to similar style art. So I was pricing it. My favorite way to price is by the square inch at the moment because it's just fair. Like you can't, it, even though, yes, of course, like as the artist, you have preferences. Like you like this piece more than you like this piece. But like for a buyer, you can't price your things differently just because you don't like the way that it looks, right? Because then that's like, it's like, well, what's wrong with it? You know, so I feel like the 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 per square inch way of doing it is just fair across your pieces, you know? So then, and it's an easy multiplication too. So I think I priced these ones at like 285 a square inch, um, which I saw so many different things online. That's, I, I think, you know, it, it went through a very uh, wide range trying to find it. And I'm still like adjusting it. I'm still trying to find like the price point that's right for my, um, like my notoriety level and, and all that. Like I don't, I don't have much of a client base yet, but it's building, you know? So I'm still trying to find a good price point, but I have a lot of support from people around me that are like helping me make those decisions and helping me stick to those decisions um, for the longevity of my work mm -hmm. to make sure that I'm not devaluing it just because I'm having a bad day and I didn't have enough to eat. And I'm like, <laughs> I'm just gonna give them away. <laughs> you know, which, which is definitely a problem. We all have those days, like Rosie was talking about that in one of her uh, reels the other day that like when she was getting started before she had a community to support her she was trying to get rid of her stuff on like offer up and I have been there too I'm like I just need to get rid of this like people won't even take it and then like what how you're just beating yourself up so hard because you know oh people won't even take it for free on offer up but like <laughs> you know like but that's not how it is like your work is valuable you're just like it's context you know and you need people to support you and like and tell you like, no, don't devalue yourself and don't devalue your work just because you're like not feeling it right now, you know? What would you tell an artist who's like, so you have specific career goals. 
Or mm-hmm. what if someone's struggling with their goals right now or they're not sure what to do with their career, so what would you tell them, like... It's the same question I had when I'm scared. Oh, no. <laughs> 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 um, well, for me, like I, like I told you, that when I had that, like, horrible vending experience because I was hungry and also I didn't make the sales that I expected to, I was, like, ready to give up. And I was... It's really hard to make it as a creative. Like, it's really hard to, to make money and make it a viable thing. Um, but, but what was the turning point for me was the community was like this room of people was the other artists that I've met, you know, that was what made it possible. They, the advice that they gave me, the, the ins and outs, um, finding, just finding a community that could support you was made all the difference. You know, can you do it on your own? Absolutely. But is, are you going to have a much better and more fun and easier time with like other people? Yes, for sure. So I think that's like the biggest advice is find your community. It doesn't have to be a place like this, but this is a really great place to do it. Um, if, whether, you know, how, however you like to do it online or yeah, elsewhere, sure. you know, just, just find your people to help support you and yeah, yeah, get you into spaces. Community, the community thing, thing is super important. That, yeah, whether it's physical or online. Mm-hmm. Like, as I remember, even like, um, it's crazy now meeting like folks that have been like in, uh, like, what do you call those? It's like a... Uh, forums before about like oh just random like oh, how do you do this thing and then like it ended up like oh you're, you're in LA like uh, we're going to this event like oh cool and now they're like in the same like industry like you know yeah but um yeah and yeah. that's and that's the other thing too like half of these paintings would not have been made if it wasn't here like I was given the opportunity to have a solo show my first ever premiere solo show and I only had like two pieces done or something mm. three pieces and I'm like okay I need to fill up a room like and that was just that happen. was an <laughs> <laughs> Like basically at the same time, and I realized I was painting the birds and the bees, and I was like, "Oh, hey, look!" At <laughs> um, but yeah, it was that was like an engine. So having other people to hold you accountable, to like to give you this opportunity, and then you have to like you still have to earn it. You still have to like make it. So for me, that was all the difference. Like you know, I, I know a lot of people are like that too. Or if you don't have somebody telling you to, to do something or people that are kind of like counting on you or you know a deadline you won't do it like how many of us mm-hmm. have like you know you have yeah. two weeks to write this essay but you write it the day before you yeah. know <laughs> so it's it's kind of like you need you need these other people supporting you in that way They're just giving you a deadline I wrote these questions down like 10 minutes ago. <laughs> <laughs> there you go yeah thanks for sharing your uh, thanks for everyone coming thank you all for being here Thank you.